Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God Talked with Noah, Dr. McLuhan offers insights on Noah's life of trust in God. We learn that obedience builds a place of safety to carry us through life storms. Noah might be one of the most well-known of the patriarchs who lived before the flood. Hollywood made a highly fictionalized story called Noah, I don't know how many of you saw that, depicting Noah and his family as fighting to keep people out of the ark, to keep people from entering, the complete opposite of the story that is presented in the Bible. At the last minute, as the floodwaters began to rise, they portrayed evil Tubal Cain as cutting his way into the ark, trying to sneak on and avoiding the glorious blessing of entering in through the gate that Father had made for all who wanted to enter the ark. The movie made no claim to being biblical, and in the process of doing so, made $360 million telling that fabricated lie. Uh, the movie proved, however, that people are interested in learning about Noah the truth about Noah, and the truth about the flood. Most, if not all, ancient cultures uh, have some flood story in their history. Uh, they tell of a massive flood that destroyed the world from which their ancestors arose to build a new civilization. All over the world, in places like the Grand Canyon, show the evidence of rapid water erosion and massive sed sediment settling or deposits. In 1985 or 1995, excuse me, I walked to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Can you imagine? A little bit younger, a little bit fitter. I wanted to see it and I wanted to feel it. An 18-mile trail, a loop, takes you down, spend the night at Phantom Ranch, come out the next day. It's 18 miles long and you descend from the rim over 5,000 feet, more than a mile, to get down to the Colorado River and then come back up. Now, if, as some suggest, that the Grand Canyon had been carved by the Colorado River, there would be a massive delta growing at the Gulf of California, Baihai. But at the end of the Colorado River, there is absolutely no sedimentary deposit. If the Colorado River wore it down, where is it? And where did it go? Rivers like the Amazon and the Nile have massive deltas at the end where the silt that they have brought down with them uh, grow at that uh, before entering into the ocean or to the Mediterranean. Interestingly, near the tops of the major mountains of the world, seashells have been found. I was uh, in a restaurant not too long ago, a Lebanese restaurant, and the man wanted me to know that up in the high mountains of Lebanon, they found seashells. I thought that was so interesting that he wanted to talk with me about that. Geological evidence in both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere that I have seen in South Africa have the marks of a global flood. And the story of Noah is mentioned in the Bible 50 times, and Nu, the Arabic name for Noah, is found 47 times in the Quran. So obviously there's a lot has been written about this man, his life, and different points of view have been given. So there's an agreement that Noah preached for a long time and that, were, uh, that there were animals that were on the ark. And that's about where the agreement ends. The Quran says, we saved him, Noah, and the companions of the ship, and we made it a sign for the worlds. This is the 29th chapter of the Quran, and ayat or verse 19. How are the contrast between the Quran and the Bible? Uh, it, it, the warning that he gave us is very clear. The Quran says that one of Noah's sons fell off of the ark while he was trying to steer the boat in the storm. I remind you that the boat had no tiller, it had no rudder, and it simply was being moved along by the hand of God in the waves that came to it. And so uh, the Quran says that Noah tried to save him and ask him to come back, and he said, oh no, I'm, I'm uh, not happy and I'm going to go climb up a mountain, I'll be fine. 
and he dies in the process of doing that. That's the Quranic version. Another Islamic view says that there were 80 people on the ark. And according to the standard Islamic narrative, the flood was local and it was not global. Now, if that were true, there'd be absolutely no need to have animals on the ark. Several years ago, I was in Armenia teaching the Bible. What a location to be teaching the Bible. In the town of Ararat itself, where the Bible says the ark landed, there was a very large window in the conference room looking right over Mount, the snow-capped heights of Mount Ararat. It was an inspiring place to teach. This is what the Bible says. Out of the ground, the Lord has cursed this one shall bring forth us relief from the work of our hands and the painful toil of our hands. This is what they said about Noah when he was born, a great prophetic word that we read in the Bible. Now, this word, the word for Noah, is very close to the Hebrew word meaning rest, and that warm and inviting and encouraging Noah, who is in the genealogy of Jesus, pictures for us the one who offered perfect rest to the people of the world. Jesus said, come to me, all who are labor and are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He foreshadowed by Noah in his very name. And God wants to give us rest today from the storms of life. Millions of people who have tried all of their lives to please Allah through good works or God through good works or some other God through good works, Buddha, Krishna, whatever, all these religions of the world just emphasize if you do enough good, we welcome you today to the saving arms of Jesus who wants to take labor out of you and put rest into you. You're still trying to earn your salvation Prophet Noah invites you to rest in what Jesus did for you and for me on the cross. The Bible says Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation, and Noah walked with God in this series of messages. We've been focusing on the communication between God and the people that he created with mankind. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. So last week... We learn from the life of Enoch that when God walks with you, he talks with you. And what a blessing it is to have conversation with God. I say to you, God talks to me, and I talk to him, and, and we have communication, and God wants you to have that experience with him as well. God had a lot to say to Noah about uh, the people he intended to save. And God revealed more and more of his plan to Noah as time went along on how God would undo the consequences that the sin of Adam and Eve had brought into the world. We read in Genesis chapter 3 or chapter 6 and verse 13, I'm going to put an end to all people of the earth, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. These are very harsh words and hard for us to read. Let me just say that it is Though it's difficult to read about a mass destruction and a flood, we must remember that if God had not saved Noah and his family and the animals, what would have been left of the world? Nothing at all the world would have destroyed themselves. It was an act of mercy to bring it to an end quicker and to save people and give humanity a fresh start. God gave Noah detailed instructions about the boat he wanted him to build. Now I use the word boat so that we would get an idea in our mind. Uh, but uh, God called it an ark. I heard a pastor say in a question and answer period, they asked how did they carry the big ark around? It was so big. And so the difference between the ark as a boat and the ark as the, the box that uh, in carried the manna and all those things that went around in the wilderness are two very different things. But the ark is a powerful symbol of salvation in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And the Bible tells us that there was only one door to the ark, and it pictures for us that there's only one way to enter into heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, 
I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. In another place, Jesus said, I am the door. I am the entrance way. And so after preaching to the people of the ancient world and building an ark for more than 100 years, the Bible says, when Noah and his sons and his wife, he called them into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 7. It took great faith wouldn't you think, for Noah to take his family into the ark. He led his family into the ark by faith because it had never rained. I don't know how to describe rain to a person who's never seen rain. How would you describe rain to somebody who had never seen it? We read in Hebrews chapter 11, like we read about Enoch, by faith, when warned about things not yet seen, that would be rain, In holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. And by faith, he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness that comes through faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. God had not given Noah a plan on how to close the door. (laughs) Just think about that. Noah believed the word of God walked into a dead-end building with a lot of animals, and God closed the door. And when we do what God says, he does what we can't do. So the Bible says that the Lord closed the door, Genesis chapter 4, 7 and verse 14. Seven days later, the rain came. Can you imagine? You're in the ark, no rain, What's rain? (laughs) You're telling your wife it's going to rain. Well, what's rain? (laughs) Seven days. Well, that took a lot of patience, don't you think? The Bible says everything on the dry land that had nostrils was the breath of life died. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 22. But the rain came and it rained for a long time. What Noah and his family experienced in the ark pictures what it means to live by faith. The water lifted the ark above all of the mountains, it says. It lifted the ark above every obstacle of danger that a vessel like that would have faced bobbing around. And whatever dangers you face, God knows how to lift you above the troubles of this world. Aren't you so glad we can trust him in the worst of times that we face? Now, there were no port windows, uh, like uh, sides of boats. They all have windows so you can look out. But but God didn't want Noah and his family looking at the waves. He didn't want them looking out. He only wanted them looking up. (laughs) What a beautiful picture. And that Peter looked at the waves and began to sink. God didn't want any sinking thoughts going on in Noah's family. And when you and I are in the midst of difficult times, we are to look up and to not look down. Noah and his family looked up for their salvation from the Lord God. So more than a year now, just think about this, more than a year, his family rested in the ark. What a picture. And rest is one of the powerful themes of the story in the story of the flood. The Bible said that the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat, plural. It's a range, not necessarily a particular peak. And we read that as it rested, Noah sent out a dove, but it could not find what? A place for her feet to rest. So this theme of resting comes through. And the second dove that Noah sent out returned with a fresh picked olive leaf and brought it back to him in her beak. And the leaf that she gave to Noah symbolized the world had been given a fresh start. And it's so good to get a fresh start. People in the room today are looking for a fresh start. People watching online, you're looking for a fresh start. God knows how to bring a fresh start in your life, no matter whether you've done something as your own fault or somebody else's fault, whatever it is, God will give you another chance. A week later, the Lord opened the door that he closed. We just want to say, 
He called out and said, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your daughters. Genesis chapter 18, verse 15. God knows how to prepare us for the storms of life. He knows how to give us rest in a storm, and he knows how to bring us out of the storm. Listen to this. The next time a dove appeared in Scripture, it came in the form of the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove and rested, rested on the shoulder of Jesus. What a beautiful thought. This is my beloved son. A voice was heard by all who were at that baptism. With whom I am well pleased, Jesus ministered in a state of rest with the Holy Spirit upon him, and all that he did, the presence of God helped him. There's a place of rest that God invites us to enter into. Another place in Hebrews, we read there's a rest that they fail to enter into. And God wants to put striving to sleep to an end in your life and mine so that we live in a place of rest and peace. We are invited to rest in what Jesus did for us on the cross. The wooden boat saved Noah and his family, and Jesus willingly died on a wooden cross to save the world from the consequences of sin. Rest in the invitation to be forgiven for all of your sins. Be filled with the Holy Spirit like Jesus was. Now, the apostle Peter wrote so much about this. He said, God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built, and in it only a few people, eight in all, unlike what the Quran says, were saved through the water. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 20. There's room in the ark for whoever was willing to enter through the only door in the ark, God's way. And for a long time, a uh, long time ago, some might remember we built a small model of the ark and we entered it in our city's festival of lights. I don't know how many of you go back that far. And we filled the ark with a beautiful mix of children from our neighborhood. And that ark was a witness to our city that one day the Lord will judge the world again. Now, God promised Noah that he would never again destroy the world by flood. But the apostle Peter warned us about a coming end of time fire. These were his words. By the same word that the heavens and earth that now exists were stored up for fire. The same word of God that said there would be a flood has said there will be a fire. And this fire has been kept until the day of judgment and destruction of all the ungodly. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. And so today, an invitation is being extended to you from Noah to listen to the word of God and to walk closely with God. God wants us to have a relationship with him through Jesus. He wants you to have a relationship with him through Jesus. Do what Noah did. Place your faith in what Jesus did for you on a wooden cross. Ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. Through believing in what Jesus did for you on the cross, you can have a close relationship with God. Don't let anybody tell you God can't have a relationship with you. He made you. He made me to have a relationship with him. Ask him to open your ears, to hear his voice, and fill you with his Holy Spirit. If you felt the Spirit of, of God or the presence of Jesus coming upon you, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for making a way of salvation through Jesus. Help us to walk with you and listen to your voice. Give us courage to obey you even when we don't fully understand. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. 
we invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.